What's going on? Welcome back to another video, guys. So today I am super excited because today it is like 55, sunny, no wind, and this is a great break after two weeks of just like whipping winds. We have been dying, absolutely dying to get out on the open water bite, but this wind has just been like blowing us around. So today we're hitting a nearby reservoir that is uh, definitely known to produce some biggins. I mean, I don't care what I catch, I just wanna catch something. So we're gonna go there, head to the spot, and we'll see you by the water. Alright guys, we are on the water. We're in where like you drop in, so we are gonna head to where we think has the juice. So basically this reservoir, just to give you guys the lowdown, it's pretty much two to five feet all around. It's a pretty shallow place. It's a sand bottom, which is always nice. There is some vegetation and then these little like uh, creeks and little back pockets, but it's usually not too bad. Now, there is a dam on the back side of this place, and that is the deepest point. The water gets to about 10 feet there, and it, gets, it doesn't get that deep anywhere else. Our water temp has been, it's still pretty cold. It's definitely getting up there, but honestly, I don't even think it's above like, like 53, 55 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the deepest point. Uh, plus we got pretty bluebird skies, so that means there's high pressure which regardless usually pushes them deep. Um, so what I think we're gonna do is go to that dam where there's really the deepest point. Just drop a drop shot down, drop like hair jigs, finesse jigs, just really small presentations. And, Cause I think these bass still haven't, haven't really flicked on to that pre-spawn hungry mode. I think they're still in that late winter to spring confusion because the cold air has really been hanging around here. I mean, like I said, it's been windy. It hasn't been above like 50 degrees in honestly quite some time. Got my back hatch in the water. Let me fix that. So we're going to go to the dam. It's like probably a 10 minute paddle, but we will, uh, we'll see you over there. All right, we are getting close to the spot. Let me just show you guys something before we get there on these contour maps. I hope you can see this. Might be tough, but uh, if you can, I'll throw I'll throw a screenshot up on the screen of where we are, actually. Let's take one right now. We are sitting in about four feet of water right now, but we're moving towards the drop-off. And it drops off pretty fast. It goes from five feet to about ten feet pretty quickly. So we're moving up on that, and we're just going to work that kind of work the drop off. I'm throwing a drop shot, Jack has a little jig on, and then uh, if that has, doesn't work, we'll get right over it and just drop things down and see what see what happens. All right, get this drop shot out there. This is uh, weird, I've never really cast it. Well, actually, yeah, I've thrown a drop shot a couple times. This real guy. This, Sales outline, it's awesome. So I'm working the drop off first, and then I'll put it in the deeper water. But I don't know what these guys are up to today. Um, I can definitely feel the drop off though. That's all, the one thing, I'm, I haven't had this rod for a terribly long, but the tip is like ultra sensitive. So if you're just slow rolling something off the bottom, you feel like every every little crack and rock and bump, which is nice. Oh, oh, did you see that? No. Dude. Did you it? Yes, I just did, my drag was not set at all. Oh my God, that was a wallop. It's really tough to like focus in on a spot when you're on a, kayak like this with just even the slightest breeze just you don't even realize you're drifting real quick uh if any of you guys else are like making your own youtube videos or whatever even just have a gopro uh one thing that i found super helpful is I, i'm like i got three batteries what i ended up doing is i'll show you here is i took a silver sharpie and i labeled them one through three 
Um, so it really just saves me that time, just like, oh, which one's charged, which one's not, popping them all in and trying them. Start at one, work your way to three, and it's, uh, I don't know, just saves you, saves you time, less time dinking around in the water, more time fishing, easier to keep track of. And then, like, if you have a bad battery, it's easy, easier to, like, identify it. It's like, oh, you know, one of my batteries dies quickly is a lot harder to fix than just like, oh, yeah, battery two's been dying, like, wicked fast. Um, but we're going to reposition ourselves. We're going to get back over in that deep stuff. This wind is just so freaking annoying. It's, like, it's only, like, two to four mile an hour wind, but it's just enough to drag me in the wrong way, spin me the wrong way. So it's really hard to retrieve this uh, drop shot, but... I got smoked once. I'm sure you guys saw it, but I got absolutely smoked. Pulled drag. I mean, my drag wasn't incredibly tight anyway, but still. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to get in position. No. No. Nobody wants to know if it's our Dodge Ram over at the boat ramp. No, it's not us. Still very upset. I'm fluffed, fluffed that bite. Really, honestly, you guys, you really shouldn't just have your phone the way I'm, I'm keeping mine uh, when you're in a kayak. Because if something does happen, you're not getting your phone back. Anything that's not fastened down or attached, you, you're gonna have to kiss goodbye. It's really nice having zippered pockets, which I had in the poncho. Um, I mean, I still could throw my phone in it, but I'm just being lazy pretty flat day I'm not too worried about it um, but if it's like windy out or you guys aren't very experienced on a kayak or anything definitely keep things in a zippered bag or, or even like a ziploc bag with air in it or something you can get like like floaty phone cases like you slide your phone in it's a phone backing so if it does go in it floats and you can see I got the GoPro with the floaty thing so if that gets knocked off somehow it's not just sinking like a brick to the bottom bass we're after. That is for sure. But grabbed ourselves a little little perch. <laughs> little tiny micro perch. Not micro but definitely not as big as those ones we were crushing on the other day. Take this GoPro out. Get a release on him. Well, it's something. Yeah, I mean, I've had like two perch follows today on this drop shot. One, one actual catch. Sun keeps ducking in and out. I haven't had any real bass bite since we got here at like 11. It's 1.30 now. There's been a lot of boats moving around. Um, I haven't seen anyone pull up a fish. So we're just kind of sticking to where we got that bite. Working it real slow. I want to go back towards that deeper water soon, but I don't know. It's just I don't know, something about this openness right here feels like where they'd be today. It's starting to move up, but I don't know. Maybe it's still. I wish I bought like some kind of thermometer with me, so I at least had an idea of how cold the water was, other than just me guessing. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think come more casts over here, 
We're gonna move back out into that deeper, deeper water and uh, give that a shot. I'm like so reluctant to take the drop shot off. Um, I don't know why. I just have this feeling like it's gonna work. <laughs> it's not proven itself. Uh, Jack's just throwing around a Sanko at this point. But if I do put something on, it'll probably be a Ned rig. I got a couple packs of these Sakoshis here. I have the Blue Craw, which is kind of like, kind of like green with red flake on one side and blue with that red and silver flake on the other side, and then just uh, black and blue uh, color. I think I have the. I think that's. I think I have Blue Craw already on a Ned rig, um, or a Ned head. So probably just tie that one on soon. If I give up on the drop shot, but I don't know. It's just not giving up on it yet. Bum, bum, bum. We're pretty much right at the edge, the top edge, where they'd be kind of coming up, moving up. If they did use it as more of a channel. Honestly, I think this is right about where I got that bite. I don't know. It's so hard to like, especially when you're on bigger bodies of water and you're on a kayak and you're moving around a lot. It's hard to really zero in on things. Having an anchor helps. That's definitely next on my to-do list. Because if I can just throw an anchor and drift to the end of it and just lock on somewhere, you at least kind of know where you are. Not sure why my line's all the way over there. I cast it straight out. Odd. Oh, we got a fish on here. Oh my god. Uh, oh, oh gosh. Oh, it's a pickerel. I got excited. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This thing's ta taking off, dude. <laughs> he's, he's fairly hooked. That's why my line moved all the way over. Alright, boyos, we are hooked up on a pick. Oh, wow, is my finger in his mouth? He's a good sized pickerel. Dude, I cannot. What if I hook on a good bass? Okay. Whew. Much easier to handle them when you get a finger in their gill plate. Guy smoked it. I don't think I've ever caught a pickerel in here. I knew he was gonna do it. I knew it. Well, he's gone. I hope you guys got to see at least a little bit of him. I knew as soon as I took my finger out of there, he was gone. Well, the bite's picking up, guys. I mean, it's not still not the bass bite, but a couple a uh, couple of exciting things. That was, a, I mean, as far as pickerel go, it was a good size. When that when he came out and I saw the gill plate, I thought it was a big old bass. But I mean, I was like talking to the camera. And I was like, wait a second, I cast it straight out. My line's at like 3 o'clock right now. Like, what happened? And I, I like kept reeling in, and then all of a sudden I got to my slack, and there was a slime dart on it. Do you guys have any luck? You didn't either. Did no, you? he didn't. <laughs> I don't think anyone did. I, I asked everybody going around going, anything. Yeah. A tub. Like a pickerel. I caught a pickerel and a perch. That was it. Really? Yeah, I haven't. Nope. Nothing. I, I'd love to get a like just a temperature on the water. You know? I know that's not, yeah. I know. That's what I was saying to him. I said, you know what? It's time to get a fish lined up. Yeah. Pack 
backed up, we're off the water. Um, I'm sure you guys just heard, but we, I spoke to that guy on our way out and sounds like he, he talked to everyone on the lake and no one had any luck. So that definitely makes you feel a little bit better about our day if, uh, if we weren't the only ones having bad luck. But all in all, thanks for making it this far if you guys are still watching. I really appreciate all the support gonna be going out I mean like we've like I said we've been going out every day it's just like we haven't been able to make videos out of it because there's literally not even been a fish or the weather's been so bad that you can't even hear the audio because of the wind but um yeah anyways subscribe all that good stuff if you want but either way I appreciate it and we'll see you guys in the next one oh, 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 oh. and it died oh wait no we said two seconds all right see you guys peace